Hi everyone and welcome back to our quick tips videos on DaVinci Resolve. Now I should say right at the outset that this video is not about archiving your project with DaVinci. Uh, DaVinci does actually have a great tool for that and one of these days soon I will make a lesson on how to archive your project once you're finished with the edit. But today we're talking all about archiving your media, getting all of your best shots onto one hard drive, a very organized hard drive. You know, this month I am doing something very exciting and this is kind of what inspired this lesson. Something I've been wanting to do for a long time and that is get organized. And, uh, you know, if you've been filming video, especially 4K video, for a while now, you probably have media that is spread out over many different hard drives. I think I have well over a hundred hard drives filled with media. Now, granted, about half of those are backups. But still, having your media spread out over 50 hard drives can make it very confusing and frustrating and tedious, time-consuming if you are asked to produce a video that needs to draw B-roll media that is spread out over 50 hard drives. Recently, the organization that I work for has asked me to start coming back into the office three days a week. Well, having the MacBook Pro makes me fairly portable. It's the media spread out over 50 hard drives that becomes a problem. Do I really want to transport 50 hard drives back and forth to the office? I found that inevitably I would be working on a project at the office and realize that there's one or two clips that I need that are on a hard drive back at home. Or if I'm working at home, I realize that there's one or two clips that I absolutely need for my project that are on a hard drive at the office. I need to get organized. And uh, the other scenario is that I travel a lot. And sometimes my organization asks me to edit something in the field. And so I have to take a case full of hard drives, you know, these little portable hard drives on my carry-on bag, about 10 or 15 of these little hard drives. I need to get organized. Uh, so to make that a lot easier, I am now, this month, going through all of my... 50 hard drives, selecting my best shots, my illustrative shots. I'm not worried about the interviews because those are old interviews that we've already used, but the B-roll shots. I'm going through finding all of the best B-roll shots and archiving them to one 10 terabyte drive. And then the plan is to duplicate this 10 terabyte drive have one at the office and one at home. So I can just plug into either one and uh, pick up the project where I may have left off. And then the plan is to pick the best of the best and put it onto this very, very fast um, SSD drive. And uh, so that way, you know, this is a four terabyte drive, so I can get a lot of B-roll on this one drive. And now when I go on a trip, all I have to do is take one of these and be working with a very, very fast drive. So I am looking forward to the end of this month when I have everything organized. And while I was doing this, I discovered that uh, DaVinci actually has a number of tools that will help me speed up this process. And so I want to share those with you today. Let's go. The way that I am approaching this is I'm making a, a separate project for each resolution. For example, some of my shots were taken in the HD format, and so I'm creating a project that is just HD. Some of the video that I have was shot in 4K, and so for those shots that I want to archive, I'm making a 4K project. So let's open up the uh, 4K project. And all of these shots were taken with the Canon 5D Mark IV. And uh, so when I started the project for this uh, footage, I created a project with the very unique uh, resolution that that camera provides, uh, 4096 times 2160. 
And if you're not quite sure about the resolution of your camera, just start a dummy project. Let's cancel this. Just start a dummy project and go into the footage and uh, go to the list and just scroll over to where it gives the resolution. And you'll see there listed all of the sizes of the video that you're accessing. And uh, this is a good idea to take a look at before you start this process. If you've brought in a whole folder from a shoot that uh, either you did yourself or somebody else provided the media, there may be varying types of uh, resolution in that folder. And uh, I think in order to do this process correctly, it would be a good idea for you to start a project for each resolution that you need to work with. So for example, this I don't have any HD here, but if I had a bunch of HD uh, footage in this folder, I would select all of those HD clips and bring them into an HD timeline and uh, archive them uh, as HD footage, not try and upscale them to 4K. And the same would be the true. I wouldn't want to archive this beautiful 4K footage in an HD project and downscale all of that wonderful, beautiful 4K footage. And uh, so it's a good idea to take a look at your footage first. You know, all the footage that you want to bring in from one folder, see what resolution it is at, and then make sure that your project matches that resolution. Okay, that's the first step, I would say. And uh, then we can start bringing in some media. I started this uh, yesterday. Let's go back to thumbnails and uh, see where I left off. Looks like we're starting about here. That's where we left off yesterday. Now yesterday when I was working on uh, archiving media I had two monitors to work with and I think that I I would prefer to have it that way. So I'm going to go up here and click on this little icon here and that will give me two monitors to work with. It kind of gets rid of the inspection tool but for this purpose we probably wouldn't be using the inspection tool that much. And uh, so I'm fine with that. This is where we left off yesterday with uh, a young man in the Philippines that is helping out his wife by doing the cooking. And so what I'll do is I'll go through each one of these clips that I filmed um, that year that I was in the Philippines and look for shots that I think that I might use in the future. And this one um, is probably not that great, so let's check out the next one. Again, not much there. No. And uh, this might be something that I could use uh, in the future to illustrate uh, cooking in a remote village. And uh, what we might do, first of all, is go up and see the length of the clip. It's a little difficult to tell. Uh, just by scrolling through it how long it is. We see that it is nine seconds and so that's probably useful and it looks like it's fairly steady all the way through so rather than set an in and out point I can probably just drag the whole clip to the timeline. The next step that I might do is just check the audio and see if there's good ambient audio to use. Looks like uh, there's no wind noise at least so we can just drag the whole clip both uh, video and audio. If I had wanted to just bring the video down, of course, I would just click here first, and then that would only give me the video. If I only ever wanted just the audio, well, I'd just click on the audio, and that would just bring in the audio. If I want the whole thing, I just click anywhere in the shot itself and bring it down. All right, let's keep rolling. Well, that's a shot I'd probably use. Maybe pick it up. Uh, about here and set an out point. We can again check the time of that to make sure that it is a long enough clip to use and if we're happy we just drag it down. And let's grab a few more for the purposes of this demonstration. Here's a wider shot of basically the same thing. You could probably pick it up about there and there's a little bit of a jump right at the end, so I'll put an out point here. There's no sense in archiving a media that you'll never use. So this is a good point. 
in time to be able to trim those clips that uh, you want to archive at the same time as you're archiving it. Probably nothing there. Now let's keep looking. Well, this might be a shot I can use. Uh, maybe pick it up right about there. Get your out point. 10 seconds we see. Fine. Drag and drop it down there. That's not a bad shot. Let's pick it up about here. Get our out point there. Drag it down. I think I can use that. Well, you get the idea. You go through your folder, pick out the best shots, drop them on the timeline. And that's probably uh, all we need for our demonstration purposes here today. Normally, what I would probably do is go right through the whole folder before I do an export. But uh, just to show you how this works, let's do an out point and uh, find where we started this demonstration. The teapot, I guess it was. Let's do our in point there. And let's go over to the export page. Now you're probably thinking right off the bat, how is this going to help me develop an organized hard drive full of my shots? Uh, if I you know, take a whole folder and export it as one video, I'm still going to have an hour-long video that I have to go through and search for, for my shot. Well, no, you don't have to do that. Da Vinci... Uh, has a setting that you can tell it to export each individual clip that you've placed on the timeline as a separate file. So the first thing you need to do is give it a file name. And this will just be the base file name uh, that you know that you'll be able to uh, easily identify these shots. So for example, these shots were taken in the Philippines in 2018. So I might say something like Philippines 2018. The thing is, uh, yesterday when I was working on this, I already started one like this. So let's uh, maybe add a B there. And uh, so that's our base name. And now Da Vinci will take this base name and for each individual clip that it exports, it will add its own extension automatically. And here's the real key of how to save individual files. Under Render, you need to choose Individual Clips. Right now, by default, it's set to a single clip. If we just left it like this, it would save this whole uh, timeline, the whole six clips, as one video clip. But if we want individual files, we select the individual clips, and now DaVinci will record those as individual clips. I'm archiving these in QuickTime Apple Pro Res 422HQ. And that will give me a very robust file that is still very easy to uh, do more color correction if I need to for when I do the edit. And so that's what I'm doing, my at least my first pass in archiving this media to the 10 terabyte drive. Now the nice thing about this is that once you save this project, you can always open it up again at any time and export in a different file format, a different, uh, like let's maybe change this to MP4. And now if we saved these in this file format, the file sizes would be much smaller and you could fit a lot more on one hard drive. And it's something that I might do when I uh, think about putting all my best shots on a four terabyte drive. I could get a lot more on uh, using a file format like this. But for this first pass, I'm going to go back and we'll, I'm going to choose the QuickTime and the Pro, Apple ProRes 422HQ. And that'll give us a very high quality format file. Just verify the resolution to make sure that it is the same as your timeline. And let's hit Add to Render Queue. And we'll hit Render. And it uh, starts the process of saving these clips as individual files. And uh, depending on how many you have on your timeline and the speed of your computer, your processor, you know, this could take a while. You might want to go get a coffee and come back. But when you come back, you'll have this wonderful 
folder full of individual files that you have defined with in and outs so that you're only getting the media that you really want to use in the end. You can see it's going through it pretty fast even though it's ProRes. Got a fairly fast Mac here. Just finishing up now. All right, so it's finished up. Let's go back and take a look at what has been exported. Let's just maybe go to this test uh, bin that I have created and import that media. And uh, here are the files that we just exported today. Notice that it has the base file name that we gave it, Philippines 2018B, and then it has uh, added its own incremental files. Let's just select all of these and bring them in and uh, we could just throw them on the timeline to verify that they're all okay, no glitches. And it all looks good. Well, those are the tips and tricks that I wanted to show you on how to efficiently archive your media. I hope that you found it helpful. Uh, we have a lot more videos coming like this, so if Da Vinci is your new thing, be sure to subscribe. We'll see you next time here at Learning Media Skills. So long for now.